to introduce Leonie McComas. Leonie McComas is a visual artist and designer specializing in mural art, oil painting, and graphic design. She is British, Canadian, Nigerian, Toronto based, and UK born. Following a growing sense of artistic responsibility, Leonie now creates her her source of life to counteract the increasing presence of anxiety, social polarization, and emotional fatigue. Leonie's mural practice carries a similar heart to uplift in seeking to revitalize the neighborhood spaces, honor community stories, and highlight subtle but responding to oh, subtle but distinct characteristics. As such, her design process involves getting to know people and creatively responding to her discoveries to multiply the inspirational qualities that are core to them. Since receiving her Bachelor's of Design from OCAD U, Leonie has exhibited in solo and group shows and art fairs across Toronto as well as internationally in Italy and Korea. Congratulations to such a wonderful um, showing and also to the little dots that you see here. There are so many of your work that is on hold and have sold. So congratulations. And with that, I'll pass it on to you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Um, we are so excited to get into conversation with you. One of the greatest parts of working with you is learning about your process. So I'm so excited that we can share it with this room today. And everyone who's joined, thank you for being here. Um, so we want to start off with your origin story or how you came to Toronto. So you're originally from UK and then you moved to Toronto. Um, I'm curious as to how that has shaped your artistry and your practice, that transition. Yeah, tell us more about that. Yeah, um, there's a lot to it. I think everything generally is more complex than you can really explain. Um, including the show, I just really wanted to highlight that even the way that the show is being told and everything from the layout to what's being highlighted came from you. Um, it really came from these conversations that we had and it really came from um, you just seeing things and wanted to highlight things as well. So. I just wanted to thank you both, because even I was like, I was, I think for the entire show, I was like, I don't know how it's going to come together, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and then uh, Ruben, like, gives me the floor plan, and I'm like, of course. <laughs> you know, it's like, this is exactly um, everything that I, more than I hoped for, so I really wanted to thank you both. Um, in terms of, like, my origin story, and, like, growing up in England and coming here, uh, I came here to study, like, uh, my dad's Canadian, so I was like, let me just figure out what that means. Um, it's a cool opportunity to come and uh, explore explore that just by living and uh, meeting people and uh, being in the environment. And of course, when I came here, I was like, oh, <laughs> way more way more complex than I thought it was. What is Canadian even? Um, so I didn't really answer a lot of questions, <laughs> um, or it did. Um, but yeah, I came here to study. I ended up just meeting a lot of painters, and it's funny my practice did start with painting, but there, at Ocat at the time, there were just a lot of like really strong painters, and I think just being surrounded by so many, um, like people like Kate Maramoto, um, Shibori Sahai, like. Uh, Aaron Roy, there's like a lot of people that have really pursued it that um, I think just being in the city obviously like sparks that desire inside of your heart as well. You're like, yeah, it sparks the, the entire reason why I went forward was because I was surrounded by people that like would say things like, oh, I just want to eat paint and like, this is my life, and they were very much like, this is. Uh, they just exposed me to like a deeper level of expression, which I realized that when I painted also came out. So, um, that's one part of it. I think the other part I wanted to highlight about that question is like um, 
moving around shows you how much we're influenced by our environment and how much we're about how our culture and everything changes our perspective. Um, and I think when you move to new places, you have to figure out how to navigate that. Like, um, you know, what are what are the ideas? What are the ways that people relate to each other? What are the TV shows that people have been like formed by? Like, there's so many things that go into people's culture and um, and also like how they express themselves and they relate that uh, are unique to them and unique to the space. So you you travel and you're like. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> yeah, you move somewhere new, and you're um, you're seeing yourself in a completely different way because people see you differently, and then you're also just being informed by how they see themselves. So that is like yeah, a big part of why and how I navigate work and work too. Mm. Thank you. Um, I want to keep following that line of how your environment shapes who you are and what you practice um, into some of the works. So um, I'm going to start off with the portraiture series that is mostly in the back room. Um, if you could share what your process was like in creating that, because environment and conversations around environment and movement was such a big part of that. So how did you approach portraiture in that way? Why did you um, approach it in that way? And yeah, tell us more about that process. Yeah, yeah. Um, so some of these works, they belong to Black and Reflective, which is a series that I started. Um, it came from many places. Part of it was like, like growing up in England, having a Nigerian mom, um, and like relating to like trying to navigate race identity and understand it too. Like uh, coming to North America and being like, oh, it's actually completely different here. Um, and then being like, how do I relate to this? How do I relate to myself? How do other people relate to it? Um, so it came from that place. It also came from being a painter, uh, but also being a people person. <laughs> so like, in the studio a lot, you're alone a lot, and you're just like, I need to talk to somebody. <laughs> you know, like, I can't actually uh, do this, the solo studio thing. Um, so it's just recognizing that I need to have a practice that involves people, I need to have a practice that, um, where I'm relating to people and like, uh, you know, a little bit more social. Um, so I was like, you know what, the best way I can navigate to myself and learn is through conversations with people. Like, um, I remember just being like, hey, like, you know, there's so many people in my life that are the more acquaintances, you know, like people that we are in the same spaces. Um, it's like we know each other, but we don't actually. Like, we go to the same events, but like, I don't really know their story. Um, so I just, um, with that in mind, was like going to places and being like, I'd love to talk to this person and see how they relate to it. And like, just, you know, get to know each other. And the cool thing about that was like, you go to the same events, it's probably because you like the same stuff. Like, <laughs> you know, you probably, you know, have similar interests or like, and I think that was like the coolest thing about the process was realizing that there were actually so many similarities. And it wasn't just like, oh, we're the same, but it was like, well, you had a, a similar cultural experience or there have been moments in your life that have been quite impactful um, that cause you to see life in a certain way that you know I haven't been exposed to, mm -hmm. and that is also like really fascinating. So the series was all about that. It was like um, d documenting that process of of you know like if you're meeting somebody, they should change how you see the world. Mm -hmm. But it's a different perspective. It's, if you're meeting somebody. Um, if you're meeting somebody, uh, yeah, who they are should be an imprint. And if these are the questions that I'm asking and that I'm painting about it, then it should also have an impact. That was a theory. It will have an impact on my work. Um, and so I wanted to document that. I wanted to document um, how getting to know somebody would change how I related, changed how I saw things, and then also changed 
how I would approach my work. So the technique would evolve. Um, I would struggle with different things. I would paint things I would really regret. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> yeah, so I think that's the series. I think um, I approach that in two ways um, it's a portrait and it's a landscape. Because the portraiture is, it's all about how some, it's intimacy, it's about how someone relates to their self, like how they self identify and relates to it. Um, and then it's landscape, so how does the environment affect the way that they navigate themselves in that space? So, uh, like that two part. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, thank you for sharing that process. Um, I can imagine those conversations brought the portraits to life in, in a way that is very felt. And I could see you know, that you explain that. Um, so on landscape, I'm going to move us towards Unknown Landscape series, which is featured in the bathroom and also here. Um, you had a different paint, approach to painting on this. Um, and when you spoke about it, um, you spoke about uh, kind of leaving with intuition. And um, we're curious of like what that different approach looked like um, in starting, what were you hoping to feel, and how did it end up feeling approaching painting in that way? Mm. Yeah, it was, um, if you look at the work behind me, um, this was like three months of me, <laughs> I was in between studio spaces, it was three months of me just being like, like looking at what I had sketched and like what I had like created digitally and then what I was doing on the piece. And it was this like meticulous layering, my technique, everything was like ta 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 everything. Um, I think it was also like part of the press of me leaving my graphic design position. So <laughs> the eye is very trained at that point. And I remember just being like, it's everything is too controlled. Um, everything just feels like fit and I needed to break out of that um, and so the whole the premise was really just like what if I just painted without a reference what if I painted without an idea of what I'm going to paint what if I just approached it and whatever came out is what it is and it was cool because it was like this trust that whatever is in me actually and the you know uh, all, <laughs> all those hours in painting class or so, um, all that time painting and learning about painting actually went somewhere if I just trust that it's there and lean into it. Um, and so un unknown landscapes came from that place of just being like, let's see what comes out. Um, the cool thing for me was, was honestly that um, we did a show with it and I was like, how do I hang them? Like, I didn't really know the order that I painted them in. Um, and I would see these, like, these, these moments. It was like, it felt, it felt like a space. It felt like a, sometimes it'd be like remnants so of like, figures moving in the space. Um, and also uh, a lot of like the hallmark, I don't know if that's a weird word to say, but like a lot of like the things that like are characteristic of what I do, which is like a lot of movement, a lot of color, a lot of kind of like explosions. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, like what is what is being told here? I was just looking to see how I could hang it. Um, but then I realized that it was actually like a spiritual journey, and which is really what I was going through at that time. It was very much like. Uh, like how the Holy Spirit had been moving in, in my life and kind of like these different moments of like, uh, just like each one was like a story and a moment in that story. And so when I hung out, I was like, whoa. <laughs> but, um, so that's what those, those are about. And um, I think what it related to was, uh, when I think about, I was also thinking about ideas of like the heart and like, like, uh, like the space in which uh, the space in which God works, and it it's almost I think the way I painted it and related to it, it's like it's a landscape, it's a place where God is moving. Yeah, so that's what those pieces are. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I love the word. Um, you, when we were talking about it, you were talking about us moving from your inner world. And I really loved that. Um, I really love that idea of um, painting from a place, place of deep interiority and letting the paintbrush or the brush just the strokes kind of lead and seeing where it goes, which is very different than the other, like your other processes. Which really different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think. <coughs> yeah. Um, can I ask about your process? So you spoke about two different processes here. One where you're um, thinking digitally, where you you sketch things completely, and then and then I'd like to kind of hear how how you continue that process. And then also you have another process where it's completely intuitive. Would you be able to maybe speak to? Um, one process versus the other, and perhaps they can walk us through which pieces in this room or in the next room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, as a result of that. Yeah. Honestly, with art, I think it's it's always just like it's a dance between um, what you know, your skills, and also intuition. So it's like you're drawn to things you don't know why, but there's a reason. Um, you make things with the skills, but you lean into specific techniques because they help you express things that you're trying to like get out, or um, it just looks really good. <laughs> but there's a reason why it looks really good to you. Um, so I think a lot of that with the processes are just this like kind of going back and forth between um, being meticulous um, and then leaving room for that to be flexibility. So I might create a digital piece that is complete in its digital form, but then when I'm painting it, it's like, well, how's the painting going to change that? Like, what do I leave in? What do I take out? Um, and the way that I paint has allowed me to work in that way. Like, I, I use a limited palette. I use, like, three colors, and it's just, like, how they interact and layer around. Way that light shine through them and everything. Um, so with this series, it's more like, yeah, it was like having a moment where I created something and then I process of then meditating on things I've created. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of like intuitive only, um, it's, it's like, what do I know? I know that if I just lay down specific colors, these will interact well, and if I make sure I keep composition in mind, then composition will come together, and then it's sitting there, I'm like, what do I see when I'm painting? So it's like constantly like checking in with myself, like, what am I seeing? Um, what does this remind me of? Or what, where is this going? And so it's just kind of like, yeah, different exercises, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that answers the question. Of course, yeah, yeah. And then I have follow-up question. <laughs> so I'm interested in hearing more about um, luminosity. So I know that that is very significant in your work. And um, I'm interested in knowing um, when you leave certain pieces open for us. Um, if you could speak a little bit more about that. Um, that's my question. Yeah, luminosity. Um, that's something that like it also like it, it came from a technique thing, but then it was like when you think about it, what does it mean? Um, so I just remember noticing that like when you paint traditionally, you go with oils like dark to light. You're adding white gloss because it takes so long to dry on top of the background, which actually won't ever be as bright as when the canvas is just the canvas. And when I realized that, I was like, oh, <laughs> I have to change everything. And I have to paint differently. Because, and then it kind of became this conversation between, like, you know, like um, light shining through versus light reflecting off of something. Mm -hmm. um, technically, it's still reflection, that's how light works. But, like, you know, it's like there's a difference in the quality of it. Um, and it made me think about, like, truth, and it made me think about honesty all these things that I was just like uh, thinking at the time. Yeah, so and that's where the focus comes from. And then in terms of like space, it's almost like a, 
more of a aesthetic thing, like there's something about breathing room. So again, it's one of those things that I grow to think about, be like, why? <laughs> why do I like this? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's something really satisfying, and I think this is something I explored in this one, I haven't explored anywhere else, is this idea of just like flat color, mm -hmm. just like, spaces versus the galleries and um, for this back room in particular too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think we're like, I don't know, art's in a very interesting place for me where we're increasingly being more immersed in the spaces and it is, uh, like it gets me really excited but then I'm like, I'm just a painter. <laughs> skill sets yet so like how can I create that experience where people are in it's like you know it's not enough anymore even as a painter to just have it on a, a canvas but with like you know the you know, well-defined border like I want how amazing it'd be if people walk into a space and they're in the world of like you know like world building it's, it's everything along those lines and so um, I'm always, I'm always seeing, seeking ways to extend it outside of the frame. Um, definitely been influenced by a whole bunch of artists that are doing the same thing. Where I'm like, sheesh! Like I see it, and I'm always like, yes. <laughs> so things that get me really excited. So um, it's following in those footsteps, and then, um, and then also like in communities, like it takes a completely different form because it's public art. Like you're you're coming into a space, you're coming into a community, and you're like, all right, like, um, so for me, it's like, okay, like, what's going on here? Like, what's the story? Like, uh, what's something cool about about this community? What's something that they really take pride in? Because ultimately, it's their space. Like, this is something that people are going to see every day, and it's really just about celebrating that. Like, so it's, it has a completely different approach and nature to it. Um, yeah, but it's, yeah. So it's more about celebration rather than like people experiencing an immersive thing. Although to have both would be like pretty crap. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you in the in the back room when you were designing that mural, how did you how did you come up with that particular way of putting it together? Because it's a combination of the grid and the wall. The, the oh wall. yeah, yeah. Um, so it's intuitive as well. But I wanted to, because I knew we were showing the tent, so I knew where the pieces were. So it's like, okay, how can this further the story that's being told? Um, and so I knew that Tim was going to be the Tim series was going to be in the back, and I was like, and something I loved about the Tim series was he was talking, and we had a conversation that hit so many points. I was just like, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, you meet someone so deep, and then like. I don't even know what a... That was the cool thing about that, actually. It's like, I can't even get this on a page. With everybody, I couldn't get on a page. I had to focus somewhere, but like... Um, Tim just had like some really amazing observations. And I think one of them was just the idea that like when we... For himself, he was like, when we create... He kind of like struggled with these I am statements. I am this, I am that. He's like, when we create these like rigid structures, um, it's like, how do we filter, info, how does information filter through it? And it's like, how does it, how do we filter like how we're experiencing the world through that? So he, these are things that he was exploring and trying to like, um, we were like discussing. And so I was like, there's something about the grid. Um, and then for him, it was like, um, trying to remain open so that he can receive information that he otherwise wouldn't, so that it would keep like evolving for him. 
so like I know that the grid was like a big part for him um, and a big part of like how I shared that aspect and so it was the two things where it's just like on one side we're having this like um, intuitive like movement everything and then you've got the grid which is not structured rigid but it's just like a different way of seeing things and so they're having a conversation so yeah So the work that we see here is oil on canvas or on wood or cradled, and then the work that you have, we have in the back are on vellum. Um, can you walk us through how you chose that particular, um, yeah, that particular um, material for your for your experiments? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, like a lot of it comes out of necessity. Um, yeah, a little bit comes out of necessity. I'm like, okay, I want to paint fast, but I don't want to be like, you know, like three days waiting for this thing to dry. I'm like, whoa. Uh, so vellum's awesome for that. Oil just like glides on it so beautifully. Um, and then same with wood panels, same thing. Like um, wood panels, it's just such a beautiful, smooth surface. So oil just glides over it in a really beautiful way. Because I work with transparencies and layers, it's it's important that it does have that. Um, and then, actually, this was the first time, so the newer pieces were primed with oil primer. Big difference, wow. <laughs> I feel like every oil paint is just like, <laughs> obviously. I'm not still like this. <laughs> so yeah, I did that, and just, again, like, the oil just sits on top and glides. So, there's honestly like, even texture is really beautiful, so like, I actually really like painting on canvas too, because, and then like regular primer, because it, it does have this like rough texture and it affects also how the paint glides, so everything, you know, everything has its beautiful place and function, yeah. Mm -hmm. When actually you, Sarah, were in the studio for the second studio visit, it came up in conversation that um, your spirituality, your religion is very essential to how you create work. It impacts your, your practice in a very um, core, kind of fundamental way. Um, we kind of denoted it a little bit like the capitalization of C creation and the um, wild text. It's a very kind of like, I feel like it was a little bit of an Easter egg, but I'd like to maybe hear you speak a little bit more about it. I know that when we had the opening, uh, you did kind of speak uh, to the people who were attending about a particular sp uh, sc uh, scripture that um, influenced you, mm. and I wonder if maybe we can bring that conversation into this room. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Um. It was great because uh, Raven and Sarah, like, well, you know, they asked me this before, and I was like, because ah, <laughs> um, I think like I'm at this place where, uh, honestly, like, yeah, God's just done so much for me. I honestly, I can't. It's not, it's not like a success thing or anything. It's just like He has in so many ways. Um, just brought me back to life. <laughs> um, so it feels more like, it feels like a gravity pull. I was just thinking about it earlier. It, was like, it feels like a shift where um, before everything was centered on me and then when God really revealed himself, and I think he does this in a way that it's very specific to each person. Like He knows what you need to know in order to see him. What you need to realize all that you want where he where where it is that we're not quite seeing him correctly um and so i remember when i had that moment it was like oh he's always been there like god has always been in my life like god's been working even when i suppressed him um and so when i when i gave my life to jesus it was like the gravity and everything the reason why i do everything shifted it was like art became a form of worship it's like how do i give back the breath that he gave me, like, how do I um, just kind of like celebrate the things that he's doing in my life? Um, how do I 
sharing that because I'm like, I can say it in words, I'm not really, I can speak, but when people are like, so tell me about God, I'm like, no, 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 like <laughs> some weird like thing that happened to me. <laughs> but I can paint about it and I, I think that's a lot of like, yeah, that's a lot of why I paint and a lot of how it's changed what I focus on is like, well, what does God see? And increasingly, it's not there yet, but it's just like, what does God see? It's like, how, what, you know, like, what is he highlighting? Like, what beautiful things did he place in people? Like, um, um, what ways is he moving in my life uh, based on the things that, like, I read in his word that, like, break me free of things that previously broke, like, well, I don't know. If you guys knew me four years ago, and I just think that like so much of so much of uh, what he put in me, and then also just like who I am, came out of that. Just things breaking up with me, things breaking up with me. So yeah, it's part sharing that, like also uh, sharing it, exploring it for myself because I'm also just like God is so vast that like he'll speak a word and then you're like. And there's honestly so many ways of looking at it, um, and so many ways that it runs through creation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just like just being like, honestly, like God blows my mind. How can I show this? How can I like explore this further so I know more about it? Um, and yeah, yeah, just everything changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, maybe as an artist, uh, one of the big things was that, um, so like one of the truths is like, okay, we're God's creation, and God calls me a daughter. It's like, he calls you, you're his children. Like you have been made in his image, like all these things, and our purposes are in him. So when I'm creating as an artist, it's actually like, I'm, my identity is not that I'm an artist. It's actually just that like, I have been given these tools, and but my I find my, my identity in Jesus. So it's just like that sonship, that daughtership, that like, it's like there are so many things that uh, that God speaks a better word on that and God fulfills and God sustains that painting actually can't fulfill for me. I think that was the big thing, it was like, I really wanted to be an artist, I really wanted to be successful, I really wanted to, all these things, and it's like, I was looking for answers in the work, I was looking for uh, justification and self-worth and everything in the work, and it just led me to a place where I was just like, uh, actually, I remember looking in the mirror and I was like, I'm so old. Because <laughs> I've been, I've been, at that time, I was like, I was giving everything to it. I was literally like, um, I remember just being like, in order for me to be successful, I need to cut everyone out of my life. I'm just pain, just pain, just pain, just pain, just pain. And yeah, I made a lot of like developments in my artwork, but. Um, other things came with that, right? So it's like, if it's not going well, then who am I? Do I really, yeah, all these things, yeah. You are, I almost don't want to go into it because you're like, shh. It's like when God is like, yo, like, God doesn't say yo to me. I'm paraphrasing. But if you, you know, he's just like, I love you, you know, like, I created you, I created you for a purpose, you're here for a reason, I am the creator, like, uh, I'm just like partnering with him, and it can work, I could be honest, he might call me somewhere else, and that's cool too, because I know that beautiful things will come from that, but uh, my identity is independent of that, but I'm called to do it, so it's a healthier place, I think.
So I'm putting this kind of as a, a little couple of seconds in between so you get to gather your thoughts and think about the questions that you'd like to ask Naomi. And uh, I think we'll ask one last question to Naomi and then pass it to you and the audience. Um, so I'm going to think of one question. <laughs> One final question, and um, I think my last question to you, Leonie, is, is there a significance in the side that you paint? Um, because for me, when I come into the works, I feel like I'm kind of looking over pools of water. That's how, that's how peering in came to, to mind. It's this feeling of you know, being lost in the fluidity, the kind of waves of the paint, seeing the different colors commingle, and just being called to this type of like portal-like inner world that you've you've shown us. It's like we're peering in to um, somebody's intimate moments, right? Where perhaps things are shifting into place or perhaps where somebody is revealing themselves to either somebody else or to them, their own self, or where there's a moment of peace. Um, these feel like very intimate, internal moments uh, where, yeah, just really beautiful healing things happen, fluid water. And so I'm interested in hearing a, a little bit about um, how you come to inviting people into those worlds, um, mm -hmm. like how you consider your viewer, because I do feel like there is definitely consideration to um, the external person that comes in and views this work. Um, if you could just talk a little bit about that, how do you um, yeah, invite us in to your work, into these different people's inner worlds, how you have us peer in. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that is a really good mm -hmm. question. How do I invite, and also um, the sizing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe that's more intuitive. Because mm -hmm. I think like, um, say the more recent work, it has to do with, I don't know, all of it. It's just like, what is something that has changed the way that I navigate? What's something that has impacted me? What's something that, like, what's something that, what is something that I want people to experience and allows them to take it, take it away? And I don't know necessarily about, like, how sizing fits into that. Like, sometimes you need a piece to be big so that psychologically you're, like, you know, it just has a different impact. Um, small pieces are more intimate, you know? They're just like, you gotta get up close, you got to be like, yeah, truly peering in. Mm -hmm. Bigger pieces are, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What do you see? <laughs> That's a very different question. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> what do you see? Ha, 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 ha.